Hey guys, welcome to part two of how to stabilize cob. So in part one, I showed you how to add stabilization materials to your regular cob mix to make it much stronger and much more water resilient. So in this video, we're gonna continue on that subject and we're gonna do three tests. So the first block will be regular cob. The second block will have a 5% lime powder stabilization added. The third block will have a 5% lime and a 5% pozzolan added. So a total of 10% stabilization in that third block. So we'll create these blocks and then I'll let them sit out in the weather for several months and we'll see what kind of uh, effect it has on them. And then we'll compare them between each other and also to the blocks I made in part one, which if you wanna watch that, I'll leave a link. And then we're gonna see which one comes out best. So this is all to find the most ideal and strongest and most water resilient form of cob that we can create. And um, to recap, there's so many benefits to stabilizing it. Um, one, if you have to go through the coating process, you may have to add stabilization to your cob. So this is gonna give you options. Um, number two is gonna make your cob much more water resilient and is, is gonna lessen dramatically that ability for it to erode. Um, it's also going to be much stronger with a much higher PSI. So there's a lot of good benefits and it's quite easy to stabilize it and really not that expensive. So I'm gonna take you over to the buckets and show you what we're mixing up. So here are the ingredients for our cob tests. Over here in the first bucket, we have crush and run gravel, also called crush and run here in the south. Now if you're in a different region, they're gonna call it by a different name. Sometimes they might call it quarter minus. It just depends on your region. So um, look for the stuff like this. It's big chunks of gravel mixed in with a very wide spectrum of other sizes of gravel and fines. This is actually what they use to make road base and it compacts very, very well. It's just an overall great material. But um, I'm actually going to start replacing regular sand, like masonry sand or concrete sand, in cob mixtures with this crusher run gravel. I've heard really good things about using this in cob from France and the UK. So going forward, I will most likely start using this crusher run gravel instead of typical sand. All right, so every one of our three test block mixtures here has 10 pounds of crusher run gravel. And beneath this here is the soil. It's a nice red clay rich soil. I don't know if I can get to it with all this gravel on top, but it's under there. You'll see you later. So we got 10 pounds of clay rich soil and 10 pounds of crusher run gravel. This is the the regular cob mix, except it's not completely regular because now I'm using crusher run gravel. So this is also an experiment, which I'm interested to see. Over here we have the stabilization mix number one. This is 5% uh, stabilization mix, which consists of lime powder. This is a type S lime. And again, we have the crusher on gravel and the soil. And over here we have test number three, which again has the same amount of soil and gravel. This is a 10% stabilization mix overall, consisting of 5% lime powder and 5% pozzolan. And this pozzolan is just a very fine, dry clay powder. And it looks like a big mound on top because it actually is. Um, because just 5% uh, is quite a lot because this stuff is very light. And of course back here we have our straw, which we'll use in the test. This is the fiber. 
And this is a compacted straw bale that I bought. And it has already pre-chopped straw, which is not actually ideal for making cob. When you're doing a cob wall or a cob project, a cob building, you want to have straw fibers that are 6 to 12 inches long. And so uh, this straw bale will work fine for this test. So um, I'm going to mix up each of these buckets and then when it's done mixing, bring it over to the form and then compact it inside the form just lightly. Since this is cob, it doesn't need to be compacted very heavily like you would with rammed earth. And then when that's done, I'll take the form apart and then move the block um, somewhere so it can dry first. And then once the blocks are complete, completely dry, then I'll put them out under the weather and we'll see how they do. So I'm going to get started. So here's the first cob mixture. It came out really dense, which is good in my opinion. What I'm hoping, really with this crusher run gravel, is it prevents cracking in cob. That's a very common issue with cob, is it tends to have long vertical cracks as you're building high walls. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into that. But um, one of them I think has a lot to do with the aggregate. So um, I'm hoping this <coughs> crusher run gravel solves a lot of those issues. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is dense. So um, I'm going to start packing it into the form and make the block. Here's batch number two with the 5% lime. It feels very similar to the first one. Um, again, it's very dense, very solid mix. Um, that can be hard to work with sometimes with your hands. Um, you can add more water to soften it up a bit, but don't add too much. Um, this stiff mix is great especially if you're using a forming system, which is something I'll be teaching more about over the next year and uh, coming years. Um, because you can actually just put it in the form and then lightly step on it or lightly compact it. And you don't need to use your hands at all, really. So 
Um, it's really not a worry. I mean, really in any regard, but if you are hand sculpting the cob walls, yes, it can get tiring on the hands and all the gravel can be a little hard on the hands, but still, it's not really a, an issue either way, in my opinion. Um, but this feels great. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the form. Here's the third mix with the pozzolan and lime. You notice how white it is. It always kind of cakes up when you dry mix it, but then when you add the water, it'll take the color of the soil again. All these little um, globs inside is, is actually just the dirt, so it's not like your cob's gonna come out white just once you add the water, it'll return to the earth color. So here are the test blocks. Over here on the left is the regular cob. In the middle is the 5% lime. And then over here is the 10% stabilization mix. So I'll let these dry for a couple weeks here under this table and then I'll put them out in the yard under the weather for probably a couple months. So I need to make sure they have enough time to really uh, stress test these. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. I hope this video was valuable to you. Again, go watch part one if you have questions. And also, if you have any questions about how to mix cob, go see my other videos on how to do that. It was a little too hard to really show you the mixing process with all this wind. The tarp kept blowing around. So go back and check my other videos. I have at least a couple showing you how to mix cob with a tarp. So um, like this video if you found it valuable comment and subscribe and I hope you watch the next video it'll come out in a couple months thanks for watching